Hello, my name is Arisa Nakamori, and I used to be a congressional intern through the AAPD about three years ago. I'm currently working at the Department of State as an HR specialist and an international um, computation manager um, for foreign services and immigration for different embassies around the world. And I'm originally from California, but I've lived in D.C. for the past two years or so. I believe the ADA has really impacted my life a great deal. My parents were Japanese immigrants and they had moved here to the U.S. I was born here in the United States. And uh, when they realized that I was deaf, I was just a few months old. And my parents thought it would be best for me to be sent back to Japan so that I could learn their native language and develop a good language foundation. So my mom and I lived in Japan for several years, and while I was in Japan, um, that was when the ADA was then passed. My parents believed that here in America there would be more opportunities and educational and work opportunities later on, um, and so you know Japan is a developing country and it doesn't have the same equivalent opportunities that would be afforded me here. So um, my mother decided that we should come back, and I was about nine years old at that point. Um, and I believe that the law itself helped me be able to have the educational and job opportunities and has really impacted my life in that way. I haven't really seen a lot of changes as a result of the ADA because I'm more of the new ADA generation, but I can compare my experience to that of other countries who don't have an Americans with Disabilities Act passed in their country compared to here. Um, and what disability rights may have looked like before. You know, if they're still developing theirs, I can't imagine, you know, it being extremely different from how it was years ago before the ADA had passed here in this country. Yes, I think that the ADA does need to have some changes in my opinion. And I think that some small businesses or companies who have under 15 employees um, they, can, they can prove undue hardship and therefore they don't have to provide services to people. Um, I would recommend that the state or the federal government um, or like I said the state government provide services to be able to help those um, entities provide accommodations. Um, and then I also have comments about the university education. I have a personal experience to share. I wanted to take a Chinese course at the University of California, Berkeley. And unfortunately, I requested um, a waiver for the verbal portion of the Chinese course because I'm not able to speak very well. And I asked for my written portion to be um, more uh, weighted more on that end. But the professor at the University of California, Berkeley, said that um, they didn't have the right to change those um, or make those accommodations. And so it seems that they only think that accommodations translates into providing a specific service and not necessarily changing their curriculum. Now at the University of California, Davis, I requested a professor do the, the same thing for a reasonable accommodation, and they seemed much more flexible and willing to take um, a look at waiving the verbal part and adding more weight to the written portion. And there was an interpreting coordinator there who was um, very accommodating and trying to find an oral Chinese interpreter to provide services and have a note taker who was fluent in Chinese for that purpose. And that really helped me to be able to keep up with the class. And it was just interesting to see those two different perspectives on how they interacted with deaf people. I think that the ADA should have some sort of standard way of providing those educational accommodations to students.